Social Media benutzt, ist schon mal mit Hate Speech konfrontiert worden. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to the talk out of the dictionary of the uh, out of the swearer dictionary of the new right by Josh, um, a linguist who is using mechanical methods to find um, yet. Yeah, uh, out about hate speech. Your interpreters are Katie and Miss Sensei. We'd be very grateful for feedback. Yeah, we will see what right um, political currents are doing to um, make people think their way. Welcome to the uh, to Josh. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Josh. I'm a paid ruminant of, a, of propaganda rubbish in the area of blah blah science at a highly criminal, completely dumb minded sponsor in a city in Orientalistan. I'm a hacking yes sayer, long active in the bloody hacker's nest in the city of the movement. Ich befasse mich in meiner Forschung unter anderem mit Sprache. Uh, I am researching language and the politics of um verdanke ich tatsächlich freundlichen Menschen, die meine Forschung per Mail kommentiert haben. A lot of these statement words, terms I've just used in my introduction, I've got via email and some I've also interpreted myself. So, a little bit of a manual for this lecture. Uh, since 2015, I've looked at the Internet, and usually we uh, react to uh, speech, speech and hate speech with shock and with disgust, but I changed my attitude to investigation, and since then I'm been doing much better. So I want to do this in an analytical way and so in a subversive way, and I think that the disgust and outrage of the mainstream society is part of the strategy and calculation about the resonance the right-wing people are using, and um, I don't want to give them them this room for resonance. And the first question which comes up for this talk, do I, do I not reproduce uh, the stereotypes um, when I'm using these um, insults and this hate speech? And the short answer is yes, but hopefully um, if I take these terms out of their context and it, within condensing them, I will be able to point out the absurdity of this worldview uh, where these terms are coming from. The second question which comes up is uh, do we actually need to show all of these words, all of these terms? I've decided to do this um, because if I had left them out, this presentation would be very hard to follow and not have the same level of persuasion. Uh, I have reduced enormously the terms used for minorities, but uh, leaving them out completely, that would uh, reduce, like, then I wouldn't be able to point out how harmful this ideology is being. A third question that is important, I think, is are we able to laugh about it? Uh, first of all, I don't think it's possible to completely avoid this because the terms the right people, white right people come up are, are very comical. And on the other side, I think uh, laughing can be a way to subvert this uh, strategy of the new right they are trying to follow with these terms. And at the same time, this ideology is against our legal system and has high consequences. So what methods did I use to um, investigate the la this language? So the first question is, who is the new right? And with formulating this speech, and also when I titled the speech, I said Neue Rechte, New Right, and I didn't capitalize it because I'm not using the academic term. because where it's capitalized and referenced that, where it's uh, an 
movement which formed in the 1960s or started in the 1960s, which is intellectual right-wing extremism or maybe uh, the area between neoconservatism and new um, and right extremism and I also uh, think other terms might not fit perfectly because that doesn't apply to the online world precisely uh, and so we are looking at Topai so statements that look uh, that reference each other and show up again and get again and these um, top oils we are looking at is uh, anti-feminism racism uh, discrimination of all types of minorities none of this is new for the new right and what is new about this is how popular it is and how much reach it has which has been uh, increased since 2015, and at the same time it's uh, only my personal point of view, but um, I wanted to look at the inner view uh, from those uh, who are looking at themselves. So I have this hit parade from Apple Blocks, and this statistic is according to numbers which from the uh, was done by a web tracker. And from these blocks and news pages, the yellow highlights, the yellow highlighted ones, uh, is a once I scraped and they looked at their comments, and yeah, it just goes down. They are coming a couple more, and there is a couple more which aren't showing up here. And anonymous news, for example, or compact their websites, and they are also used here. And I used 29 different sites and their publications and their comments. How did I analyze this? I used automatic recognition for because um, automatic recognition isn't that super useful here because all terms can be used as hate speech or uh, as insults depending on their context. So, like, I needed to look at the specific context for these words, if it's actually about hate or if it's also used in other ways. So I uh, looked also at also mainstream uh, newspapers and also more diverse uh, websites and looked at which words, uh, which terms are significant statistically in which, which types of media. And still not all of them, all of these hundreds of thousands of words aren't specific uh, to the sites um, and not all of them are insults. So I also did a parsing where I looked at um, the terms which came up a lot. So And I checked out whether they are actually uh, relevant for hate speech. Yes, we have here, for example, rhombus. We have the word good, which is uh, good, which is uh, occurring a lot of times. We have many uh, lexemes which contain the word climate, um, like climate change, climate movement, etc. But on, often we also have endings like Ian. Um, yeah, we have Islamania, Erdogania, Africania. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we also have like um, uh, very sexualized words like perversistan, um, fuckofistan, and uh, yeah. uh, so we could um, find uh, different strategies of how those words are made. The first one I want to introduce is uh, the um, use of 
of um, quotation marks, quotation marks uh, to show a distance um, from what the word actually means. Um, for example, here uh, we have um, about Claudia Roth the word uh, conceited Trudy um, and the word um, um, the bill, the word um, educated, which is in hyphens, uh, in, in quotation marks, sorry. Um, we have the same sometimes in the word CDU, which is the name of a German party. Um, so, for example, with the C, where they doubt the Christianity, and the D, where they... Um, where they doubt the democracy and uh, sometimes even they doubt that it is a union and also put quotation marks on the U. Um, another graphematic uh, me medium of making words is um, putting different um, parts of a word in capital letters. Um, here you find part of the word government uh, in capital letters. Um, uh, here they find in the words of um, receiver of elementary a typical Arabic first name, which is Ali. Um, here we see the no name of a German politician wrote um, in the name or brain prosthesis. And here we have um, also uh, the CDU highlighted in uh, something called UGEL Germany Hater. Another graphematic me medium of making words um, are stars or points which um, are there instead of certain letters. So um, often uh, there are as many stars as letters that are not written. Um, here you can see another art of doing it. So those um, stars don't actually um, mark another letter, but they are probably there to make this word not um, sorted out by a certain um, search in the internet for slur words. Um, here we see a very obsessive form of gendering. So there are like uh, gender stars and um, underscores and the German female ending in. Here we also see this kind of star, um, but here it should be like uh, the star and half moon, like in the Turkish flag, um, in the acronym of the party CSDU, CSU. The next um, me medium to make words I want to show is um, that part of the word is um, used with other words in brackets. Um, yeah, we have Claudia Roth, the German Titian again, and she is called uh, Claudia Snoth here. Um, again, we have the CDU, the chaotic, debile undemocrats. Um, and then, as I said before, the new right likes to use certain endings, um, and those endings have the function to um, devalorize certain things. So we have here, ex for example, the ending land. Um, we have this on many words, um, like also on a word for Asylum seeker in German. Uh, other endings are Ling, Ler, Istan, etc. We will see others of that. Um, here we see that actual words um, who are positive in their basic meaning are used in a bad contents. For example, here we have many. Um, things with the word good. We have goody, goodest, um, godone, etc. And this um, is used for the whole word field. So we also have like the good German, good willing, good city, feel good and gender giddy. And in the end, this word with good are um, a negative word as well. Also, we have yeah this gendered language. Um, actually, at no place there is gendered more than a new right commentary. Um, yeah, comments. 
Um, so, for example, this um, thing with the gender X is used in the new rights comments more often than in actual other contexts. We have a lot of exaggeration, so a lot of use of the hyperbole, and you can find this in the words as well. So I want to show some parts of uh, the good man. There can be the super good man, the super duper good man, the ultra good man, the super giga very good man, the super hyper extra positive good man, the super ultra mega top good man, and um, the good better man. The better man, the better woman, the better woman, the better woman, the better woman with gender gap, the better better man, better vox in. Voxman. <laughs> it's quite difficult, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can do it much in the German language. There's a super better man, the um, Aryan better man, the world better man. And where the better man is there, you can use the best man, uh, best man, the and uh, yeah, so on. He, I won't read it anymore. Um, yeah, we have here the super good best man the super good best green man, the and so on. <laughs> yeah, you can do that like all the time. Super, super good over, well, <laughs> over high working best man trademark. Of course, none of these words are meant in a positive way. They are all meant negative. And often uh, those words are changed um, by mixing two words. And there you want, they want um, yeah, to make one word more negative. Um, here we have migrant and red. And we have something like migrat in the end. Here we have journalist and rascal, and we make jurascal uh, out of it. And uh, out of the journalist and the demagogue, we can make the journagogue. An also way to dissociate uh, the words is to use words f or like letters from other languages like the Turkish U, U uh, to reference that a word might no longer be an actual German word like uh, here in Berlin Kreuzberg, which is a part of Berlin in Berlin Kutburg, pretending to be Turkish. Um, so they also add letters or change the word just to a couple of letters, and that attributes um, an attribute to a person, for example. Here we had uh, Marionetta, which is a name, but it's about how this person is being directed with this change of word. Or here we have Barack Obama, Bamba, which wants to point out that he might not be a U.S. American. And another very popular thing to do is composition words, which is a very popular thing to do in the German language. So we are just combining two words. So there is this word asylum import, Merkel. So it's pointing out that Merkel is just known for this one attribute, which is, uh, yeah, taking in immigrants. So here we have this word Volkstodrautenhexe, which is created from national death rumble switch. And here we have a very, very long term, um, which is multi-culti hail to the refugees, self Hate is our redemption of bad Nazi Germany. Or another by example is, I'm traveling over half the world through many uh, safe countries to get to the state with the best social system, refugee, refugee asylum swindler. So 
And um, we are looking at another strategy, looking at the strategy to create new words. Uh, we are it's more also very interesting to look at their world view. And if you're just looking at the geography, we could uh, maybe think the geography looks like this. And but in truth, it's a little more diverse. It actually looks like this. So there, there is Trump land and Putin land, and in between there is Eurasia where Germany is a part of. Below Trump land is uh, very far away is Tan. And Oceania, Oceania is uh, called Norway Australia. And then there is uh, Shitholistan, which is actually a term triggered by uh, term influenced by Trump. So, uh, looking at Arabia, we have the EU DSSR, the Multifiki Europa Caliphate, and Af Africa Arabistan, and the um, demanding Orient. So then there is it's differentiated between uh, the individual countries which then have their own derogative terminology. So looking closer into Germany, which the, is very dear to the new right, so uh, who would hope for positive terms here, but also the German states are actually having a lot of insults associated with them. So um, we have Hamburg, the free knife fight city of Hamburg, the invasive city, Shithole Hamburg, etc. And also if we show, look to North Rhine-Westphalia, um, we see here North Rhine will fall, um, North Rhine Arabia, which isn't really better, also uh, called Mord Rhine Repay or um, North Catastrophalia, etc. Uh, yeah, and I vomit. Berlin also has a lot of um, bad words. Um, we have the uh, Goodman Salia Berlin slum, etc. But if we go away from the geography and look at the state, actually, and yeah, now we ask ourselves what the picture of the new right is of our governmental Germany. Um, we have the people from which, um, yeah, the which is also um, used many bad words. We have uh, animal metaphoria like cattle and sheep, but also we have metaphoria for uh, being um, stupid, uh, being thumb, uh, also um, sing things with sleepy, because sleep obviously also is something they tell. Now if we here see the three, um, three pillars of the democratic state, we also find many words that show that um, the government is compared with the GDR government. We have something like FRGDR Junta, Neo SED, uh, and um, often they criminalize the government like um, crook government or governmental terror. They often say that the government would be directed from elsewhere. They talk of a marionette um, government. And in the end, there is just uh, slur words also. Like uh, government prostitutes. Um, also, the people working for the government are um, there. Are many slur words for them. Also, they use many words with. Um, 
with traitor of the people. Um, uh, they call the parliament uh, people's traitor place, um, but also uh, like uh, the place of the, the parliament of the SED number two. And um, they also have bad words for the for the elections, like uh, election simulation, election cult. The same is if we look to the judicative, um, there are a lot of slur words for um, for judges. And also for the courts, um, there is the National Court of Trade, trade uh, Trading. Um, and also for the, for the police um, and the way in which uh, law is made, uh, there are a lot of bad words. Often saying that um, the law wouldn't be, would be too soft. So also in the mathematics, we see a lot of new uh, ideas. So there is formulas, which we can see uh, referencing uh, Nazi Germany and totalitarianism and pseudo-mathematics, uh, where you um, amplify stereotypes and make them more uh, like uh, like pointed out, so uh, so if you say colorful and tolerant and diversity, they say it's a dangerous place. <laughs> There's more examples. So here's Merkel uh, plus repopularization uh, equals racism plus genocide. Um, and there is already a new right-wing terminology within this equation. And if you um, change this fake equation around, it doesn't make any sense anymore. So another thing is health and um, yeah, that's also a very relevant field where we are looking uh, at the, that being used to derogate uh, minorities. So, um, either the people are praying to the migrant, to the migration, or to a religion, or they are just ill. Here we have a different kind of um, illnesses that the people are befallen with: psychic and behavioral disorders, infectious and parasitic diseases, diseases of the digestive digestive system, and skin disease. And then are also some un. Yeah, actual symptoms that we haven't discovered yet, but uh, they are very creative here. I don't want to go through all of that, but we find a lot of new manias and neuroses, uh, like the uh, saving the world mania, the guilt neuroses. Um, but uh, also in the... Um, in the part of the abscesses, we are talking of Islam metastasis, invasive uh, multiculti cancer abscess, etc. Those last examples show that um, the slur words take um, the words from usual words. Um, and from words like um, that are contrary to each other, like um, ill and sane, etc. And yeah. So on the one side we have the reference to good, and on the other side we have the uh, reference to mental illnesses um, and delusion. And so it's also about being irrational and. Frankfurt references being health again. Uh, Linksversift is a term which is referencing cleanliness, 
and there is a bunch of examples which show up again and again. So if you are looking at a lot of these terms, then there is this uh, field of duologies we can build up here. So it's religious versus uh, rational. It's female versus masculine. Um, I always name the positive things for the new right first and then the bad things last. You might find a pattern here. There is criminal versus legally obliging. Um, there is the elite versus the simple people um, and so on. Let's get to some um, final thoughts. So we have looked at this universe of 2,000 uh, derogative terms, terms used by the New Right. The New Rights pretend to be patriots, but it's obvious that they do not really uh, like the country they are living in. They don't only dislike the country, but also the people that who are living in it and also the democratic institutions. So this is the 30 minutes are just the tip of the iceberg and there is so much more and I've identified a lot of those more and it just never stops. Social movements have always left their traces in language history. So in the six to, like there are slogans from different types of social movements. Uh, if you look at women's rights, as we see influence with uh, gender terminology, and I think the new right will be uh, known for their hate speech. So the, what can we learn from how the right, new right uses these terms? There is a use case to the inside because derogating um, everyone and everything is the smallest uh, common denominator for this group. They're trying to find more and more radical terms for to be more and more insulting. Um, and it's one of the things which actually brings them together as a community. So we also need to look at these terms in the context of the attention spans and um, it's also about getting the attention from the public and resonance from the public. So if we have this analytic view we, uh, I tried to give here, I hope we can counter this strategy of finding a resonance in the public. Thank you for your attention. You've been, uh, or you're still listening to the translation of the dictionary of right wing, insulting right wing speech. And uh, if you have feedback, you can contact us on Twitter using the hashtag C3T or send us an email at hello at uh, c3lingo.org. And we will be continuing on with questions. How does the new right call hacker, hackers? Uh, well, I actually have to look this up. There isn't a lot of terms for hackers because there is some level of respect. Well, a tiny level of respect at least. But I will just look it up. Give me a short second. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm finding, well, it's a bit funny, well, actually not that funny. It's uh, <laughs> cutting off the head, which is um, also includes the word hacker in German, but um, I don't think you are actually meant by, by that. Um, I'm interested if there are um, analogies to the left spectrum and which those words are. And the second thing is, what does the new right like? Is there anything they do like? That's a good question. I can't answer the first question or the first part of this question because I think, well, there is 
the regulatory terms for people in power, and that's always been a strategy of people without power. So I think this is visible in all uh, political spectrums, uh, but I don't think it's there in that much detail as with the left spectrum as with the right spectrum, because there is this style of communication which is developing there, which is not comparable to what is done on the left spectrum. The second question again? So the areas I was looking at, I was looking at insults. Uh, I didn't find out anything they are liking except for the AfD, the alternative for Germany. You said um, that they insult everyone and everything. Do they also insult themselves? Uh, it would be a fiction to think it's a homogeneous uh, field which just support each other. And there are some people who are more radical, some who are less radical, and they are also fighting amongst each other. So, yeah, obviously there are also derogative terms for each other. Um, how did you find your sources? Which blocks did you choose? And the second question is, how big was the, the corpus with which you worked? And are there, did you compare this corpus to mainstream media? Yeah, I think you came a little late, because as I've said before, I've looked at uh, Apple blocks and which one was the most popular. So I'd, I've also added some uh, newer ones and I, there is I think 22 million words inside and I've refer cross-referenced this with Spiegel Online, Zeit Online and also big discussion boards. I don't know if the question is already answered but did you find out how um, they describe things as positive because it seems like every word that is used to say positive thing is used to devalue something. Is there anything that is connotated posit positively? Yeah, I think that's a practice uh, which makes the people feel good. It's their only way to feel good, to uh, insult others. So, if you look at comment, comments and if you look at their texts, they don't feel good in this Germany. They don't feel well. They want to get rid of it. So, what else is there except for uh, publishing these comments? And they do appear to enjoy it, and there's a lot of creativity. And, uh, well, one would hope that they would invest this creativity into other things. Uh, and for us, it's an interesting field of study. Um, do you only find this kind of speech inside of the net, or is it also outside? Yeah, I was in Dresden at this time when this <laughs> really started. So you also hear it on the streets and you hear it in restaurants and bars, just everywhere. But that isn't as easily, uh, like you can't use machine learning to study it. Is there an effect if you try to hold against it or... Is it better to just refrain from from joining a discussion? I don't have done studies on that, but I think I'm convinced that this is a strategy of provocation and it is looking for resonance. And I think we have to avoid this area of resonance. So I think personalizing this or scandalizing it uh, is not helping out. So I think the way to go is ignorance and blocking it out. One other question from the internet. Um, there is a rather pessimistic. How do you keep hope? How do you keep your hopes up? 
Well. Also ich finde, also ich, ich muss sagen, mir hat das, äh, also ich have to say, I was more helpless habe, before I did this das analysis. And throughout doing it, if you not just keep looking at individual things and if you are putting this into patterns and look at the world view and that is kind of relieving because I think it's not it's in itself as dangerous. There is, it, it's not yeah, inherently dangerous, but... Um, it is also kind of concerning that the acceptance of violence uh, is becoming more popular and it's being apologized as, as being just a natural reaction to things and that isn't as visible in just looking at specific words and terminology, but I, this is what is also very much concerning to me. Okay, thank you for all those answers and insights. I want to end this talk. Um, yeah, you can give us feedback under the hashtag C3T. You listen to Katie and the Sensei. Thank you. <laughs>